Well, I'm really happy with our effort. I thought, um, thought our guys were ready to play. You know, I have really had several thoughts on the game, but you know, I thought defensively we were re really locked in, but foul trouble uh, caused us to sort of go to the zone, which uh, inflated the score for a while. And then, you know, St. John's, to their credit, you know, they have some talented guards, gotten a little bit of a rhythm. They played four or five quick guys out there that all had the ability to shoot the three and, and you know, cut the deficit to whatever it was, 15, 17. Uh, but, you know, we, we needed to take time off the clock. We needed to save guys from foul trouble as best we could. Felt like that was the best way to go. And then, um, you know, they hit a couple circus shots there that, you know, you'd sort of tip your hat and hope they miss one or two of them. But it's, it's hard to cover five players uh, in any type of zone. I thought our, our freshman played really well today. I um, thought Tyreek Jones came in for uh, both Rashid and Sean, who got early fouls and uh, had some good, some bad, but, but more good and really, really uh, rebounded the ball, finished like we expect him to finish around the basket against a very athletic team. And then that was Quentin Gooden's best game. Um, and it was exciting to see. And he had a couple um, you know, drives off pick and roll, looked at the top of the key. 10,500 fans looked at the top of the key along with me, and he dumped it underneath to, to Tyreek. So he, uh, he just has to be a little bit more consistent like most freshmen. but. Um, Played well. So did Kaiser Gates. So did Malcolm Bernard. Um, you know, guys that uh, maybe you don't write on uh, or write about all the time. You know, really lifted our team today and played a very talented and beat a very talented St. John's team. So, Chris Jones scored uh, season high 97 points. Had 21 assists on 34 field goals. Is this the best you've seen the guys uh, kind of find the, their best shots? Uh, I thought we played really unselfish. I think that's been. Um, something that we've gotten better at over the last three or four games. Um, I think we're finding the open man a little bit better uh, than we did earlier in the year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely an efficient game offensively. And we shot the eyes out of the ball in the first half. On uh, the second half, had we made more free throws, we scored over 100 points. And uh, again, you do that against a team that pressures. And as ath athletic as St. John's is, um, you take it. specifically are looking to drive to create passing lanes and shots for the teammates a little more than driving to create their own shots like they were earlier in the year? Um, what I think is we've made an emphasis to try to you know get the ball in the lane, especially against St. John's. With, with them being such a pressure-oriented team and out in the passing lanes, if we just tried to play around the perimeter and took jump shots, um, you don't get to the bonus that way. We, we wanted to get the ball in the lane. And you know, when we come back from the uh, first four minute war and uh, we have five team fouls on St. John's, that felt really good. You know, because you can have a game plan of trying to get a team in foul trouble and you, know, you just can't get there. But I knew that they would be handsy. I knew that they would give great effort. They'd react to the ball. And uh, we did what we needed to do, and that is get them in foul trouble. And so I think our team has made an effort uh, to try to work the shot clock a little bit, uh, get the ball into the lane, and then good things will happen from there. How far has Edmund come as a defender from last year? Uh, it's, it's not even close. I mean, I think he's made a, a big leap offensively, but he, he's made um, a double big leap, if that's um, a great way to describe. Just He's locked in off the ball. Um, he um, uses his length so much better uh, on, on guys that he uh, defends. He's, he's a problem. He can block shots. He can defensive rebound and start our break. But just his awareness of what the other team's trying to do and recognizing actions is, is probably where he's grown the most. You mentioned his offense coach has two straight games now over 20 points. If he scores at that level, does it take your team, do you think, to a different level? Well, I don't want him, again, his job is to quarterback the team, you know, and, and um, my feeling is you do what the game tells you to do as a point guard. If you have two people on you, then you don't force a shot and, and you hit the open man. And I think Edmonds has really, uh, the last couple games, uh, has found uh, you know, the, the way that we would love for him to play. Aggressive, downhill, drawing fouls, drawing other defenders. And I think he's finishing in the lane better. He had a nice little floater, had a, you know, the dunk. I mean, he's, just, he's finishing in the lane better. He's also uh, creating contact because he's so daggone quick. And I think he's shooting the ball so much better than he did earlier in the year. Um, so 
I'm not intrigued by how many points he scores, but how many opportunities he creates for both he and his teammates. That's the most important thing, and then making the right decision from there. Chris, are you comfortable now in all situations with uh, Quentin playing the point and Edmonds playing with him off the ball? Yeah, I mean, again, there's there's some experience that, that Quentin has to gain, but you know, it's it's like when you're coming out of college and you know nobody will hire you. It's like, why won't you hire me? You don't have any experience. Why well, can't get experience? And so it's the same thing with Quentin. And the nice thing about it, when you have Ed up the floor, is an advanced pass. You have one of the fastest players in the country, uh, one of the best athletes in the country. When Edmund has the ball and he's bringing the ball up and his other teammates are in front of him on a break, you know, so are all the eyes of the defenders. And so it's a way for Edmund to get a little bit lost. And I thought Quentin you know, held the responsibility of a point guard really well tonight. Heading into this stretch of Villanova, Butler, and Creighton. Is that who we play? <laughs> wow. Wow. How do you how do you feel about where your team is heading? Um, it is what it is. You know, it's um, it's a, it's a monster schedule uh, that certainly doesn't get any easier. You go on the road, you're at home, you're playing teams that are in the top ten. But I'll say this: it beats the alternative. You know, you look through a media guide, you just flip back 12, 15 years, and um, the caliber of games that we play uh, is really a credit to the, to this university and and sort of the upward trend, uh, if you will, that, that the basketball programs had. And, and so um, it's an awesome feeling for our program to, to play the likes of a Villanova who won a national championship, you know, a top 15, top 10 team in Butler and Creighton. Um, this league is, is standing on its own two feet uh, really well. Doesn't make me feel great, though. This was a rare day when the team was out-rebounded. Do, do you attribute that to – um, your high shooting percentage and, and their high amount of three-pointers? You know, I, I don't really know. I do think uh, part of it has to do with our zone. I know that they got several uh, weak side rebounds um, out of the zone. Again, St. John's crashes five to the glass. Not a lot of teams will do that. And so on the back side, uh, which is where you're a little smaller sometimes, I, I feel like they, they got a few that maybe in man they wouldn't necessarily get. But I, I still have to watch the film and we can't start to let that part of our identity um, go the wrong way. You mentioned some of the uh, circus shots, and at the same time, 82 points was kind of up there in terms of points you guys have allowed throughout the season. Do you kind of attribute that just to the circus shots, or do you, would you nitpick the defense a little bit? Maybe? Well, I mean, I, I, I've got to watch the film. You know, I thought a couple of those um, you know, threes were in transition off of missed free throws. You know, it all ties in. Um, you know, game, the game is not, is not football. It's, um, so we make those free throws. Now our defense is a little bit more established. They don't necessarily get those transition three looks. But, you know, 82 points uh, is, is too many points to surrender. Um, but we knew coming in they have some high-level shot makers with a lot of freedom. And for those of you who played basketball before, if you ever get down 30 points, it's a lot easier to get greased from the three-point line than it is to do it when it's a tight game or, you know, when, when, when the stakes uh, are really on the table. So having said that, we've got to defend better. Uh, they've, they have very talented uh, playmakers. Do you think Pond and Lovett were as advertised? Oh, I know they were. I mean, I saw it on film. And, uh, you know, I got to coach Shamar just a little bit in Colorado. Uh, and Marcus Levette has, had, has a huge rep. He's from this region. So we, we knew, at least as a coaching staff, what we were facing. You know, those two guys are a little bit like Van Exel in terms of their uh, cockiness, their ability to um, wiggle you, go to the rim, shoot the three. Huge matchup problems. The fact that they're freshmen is really scary for the league. Talked about Stanley Burrell yesterday a little bit in the press conference, but did you have a chance to talk to the team about what kind of player he made himself into, or did they get to meet him at all? Uh, I think they've met Stan, and, but they they've met him well before um, this. And you know, I've talked about uh, Stan several times to our team, not necessarily when he came in uh, for his Hall of Fame induction, which is well deserved. Um, but Stan really recreated himself while he was here at Xavier as a player. He went from a guy that only thought about offense that as a junior got into a real funk shooting the ball and couldn't snap out of it for a while, and then really embraced the role of defensive stopper. And that's not just coach speak. I mean, he really stopped people. And he didn't just do it once he got on the floor. He did it with his preparation. I remember him watching 85, 90 clips on Eric Gordon the day before we played him in Chicago. He knew every tendency that Eric Gordon had 
and Eric Gordon didn't score until it didn't matter. You know, the final thing I, I want to uh, add, and uh, I sort of wrote this out, so I cover all bases. That beginning tomorrow, uh, Miles Davis is going to be reinstated uh, to our basketball program. You know, he's met the terms of his suspension, which were outlined to him at the beginning of the school year when he was suspended. You know, I think he's learned some valuable lessons uh, from his mistakes, uh, his 15-game long suspension, and his reinstatement. Uh, I think he needs to continue to make good choices uh, in order to keep his standing within our program. Uh, he's obviously had a, uh, a long road to this point, and his role on our basketball team will be no different than the other 14 guys in our locker room. He's going to earn everything he gets uh, from this point forward. So he's got a lot of work to do, and I think he recognizes that and understands that. Um, and so we now move forward with Miles as part of our team.